Good day. My name is Tim Rooney. I'm Director of Product Management for BT Diamond IP. This brief video will provide an overview of DNS DDoS attacks. That's distributed denial of service attacks against your domain name servers, DNS. These DNS servers are critical for your network and they basically provide that resolution functions for users to get to your website, your email servers, and other IP applications you may be hosting on the internet. So we're going to look in particular about the attack type that occurred on October 21st against Dyn DNS. Dyn has been very gracious in sharing information about the attack and some of the uh, attributes that we'll talk about in this video. We'll talk about also steps you can take to help protect yourself against the occurrence of such an attack on your DNS infrastructure. First, let's take a look at the basics of what is a denial of service attack. And if we look at really a non-denial of service attack environment where I've got a DNS server, multiple DNS servers ideally, at least two, out there resolving my namespace. And what I mean by that is that in the DNS server I can publish my www address and the corresponding IP address for my web server. I can publish MX or mail exchanger records for, and the corresponding name of my mail hosts and enable that to look up the IP address. So there's various records I can publish in DNS that allow users on the internet at large to access my resources that I want to make available on the internet. So I've got these normal users out there using mobiles or laptops or, or what have you. And so uh, what the attacker tries to do, the objective is really to inundate the DNS server such that it's unable to process all of the queries that I'm getting from legitimate hosts, those users out there that I want to have access my website and, uh, and do business with, perhaps, uh, for example. Uh, so the attack impact is that the uh, attacker is, is flooding the DNS server with so many packets or so many DNS queries that it really just doesn't have the resources to be able to address all of those packets plus the legitimate packets it's got sprinkled in among all those attack packets. There are various forms of the attack. Now we're going to focus in this video primarily on the attack that was constructed against Dyn DNS, which is really de legitimate DNS queries hitting their authoritative uh, DNS servers, which is basically the, the uh, analogy I used in terms of people looking to get to your web address. Uh, but there are many forms from the TCP SYN attack, just basically flooding TCP opens, opening TCP connections and leaving them open. UDP flood is basically flooding UDP packets, which is more commonly used with DNS, though TCP is permitted. Uh, the use of multiple attack origination points really refers to the distributed nature of the denial of service attack, the DDoS. And then there's other forms of, uh, of attacks for di distributed denial of service from bogus queries, making the DNS server look up information that you know is bogus just to keep it busy and uh, not resolving legitimate queries. PRSD is more of a pseudo-random subdomain uh, attack, which is really more around, uh, again, similar to bogus queries. But it's really just a form of just hammering the server to the point that it cannot resolve uh, legitimate uh, queries. Now, there's other forms of DDoS attacks as well. So, uh, the class of reflector attacks, for example, where you're actually attacking another device using DNS. But we're going to really, again, focus just on the, the primary brute force distributed denial of service attack that was experienced on October 21st. And this, in this attack uh, that impacted Dyn, they were targeted. Uh, the Mirai malware was used as the, uh, the prime source of the distributed denial of service attack. What that malware does, it basically scans the internet looking for devices that it can access using default user IDs and passwords, primarily Internet of Things or IoT devices. So these may be security cameras, they may be uh, home uh, intelligence systems that you might have, uh, DVRs, etc., that uh, the attacker was able to access through the internet and plant their malware. And then at such point, once it's got the malware installed, it is at the ready to be commanded to launch an attack at a given target at a given time for a given duration. So in this particular case on October 21st, the attack featured up to 100,000 devices. So it really engaged a tremendously large botnet and, uh, and among those devices, tens of millions of IP addresses were, uh, were uh, said to have been used as well. So these devices were using multiple IP addresses, really assuming they didn't care if they got the answer or not, they could really just make up a, a source IP address uh, randomly and just launch the packet. And the answer, if it did get processed by the server, would just end up somewhere else. 
So in that case, they were just trying to spread the attack out in terms of not only the number of devices out there, but the number of source IP addresses of the query. So uh, what uh, Dyn published as their estimated attack bandwidth, so to speak, was 1.2 terabyte bits per second. So it's 1.2 trillion bits per second, which is just tremendously huge volume of an attack. So if we take a, a simple look at, at DDoS, okay, so that's kind of how it works from a, a, a device uh, impact. If we kind of step back and take a very, very, very simple basic look at how DDoS works. And uh, if you think of your DNS server as kind of a leaky bucket, and really what it is, it's getting a query on the inbound side from the internet. And of course the responses are going back to the internet, but here we're kind of showing a waterfall type of, uh, of uh, diagram in this very simple illustration. But uh, the DNS server does have some processing that it does, and then hence you have this bucket concept where it's consuming resources, it's got uh, looking things up in memory, it's very, very fast. But uh, nevertheless, it does require resources, and, uh, and the idea is that as you've got queries come in, the DNS server processes them and uh, replies with responses as appropriate. And these resources are really measurable in the, in the sense of monitoring your servers uh, for their memory consumption, I.O., CPU, really the server basic uh, uh, statistics that you want to keep an eye on to just make sure that uh, you've got adequate resources, computing resources to handle the level of DNS queries that you're receiving and also of course the DNS application itself. So if we look at this normal case and now expand it to a distributed denial of service, here from the DNS server's perspective it's just getting pounded. The pipe is full with DNS queries and what happens here is that the DNS server tries to keep up as best it can, but there's only so much room in the bucket. And ultimately, you end up with a case where the attack just overflows the bucket. You end up with dropped packets. So these dropped packets could actually far outnumber the number of responses that you're getting back, again, because of the resources that are being consumed. And uh, within those dropped packets could certainly be a lot of attack packets, but the attacker doesn't really care. But for the most part, they're also legitimate packets. So if you're sending a query to this DNS server, you may not be getting an answer. It might just time out on you, uh, or you may end up getting a response if you're lucky. Uh, but in a lot of cases, the attacker hopes that they're just trying to flood it so much that you're not going to get a response nine times out of 10. So that's basically the anatomy of the attack. Now, we don't show the multiple input points on the other side of the internet cloud, but we looked at that earlier where we've got multiple attack points using uh, tens of millions of IP addresses just flooding this DNS server. So what can you do to help stem the flow of this attack? Well, there's really two basic approaches. One is to stem the flow coming in. And so if we're able to kind of ratchet down the incoming uh, queries coming in from the internet, I can return my flow, so to speak, to a more manageable level and, uh, and get it back to really the case where I had before, where I've got a manageable level of queries coming in and I'm able to send responses back out. Now this type of approach is useful in general uh, however, it wasn't going to work very well for the Dyn uh, attack, just given the fact that there were tens of millions of IP address sources sourced on that, and there wasn't a lot of commonality. So it wasn't so easy to pick out which was a, an attack packet, which was a duplicate packet, et cetera. There was a lot of variability there. So this is a good approach in general, something to consider for your defenses. However, uh, in this particular case would not have been overly effective, other than just rerouting uh, queries. They do have a global network and they were able to try to reroute traffic among their various data centers uh, to varying degrees of success. Now the other method you could use besides stemming the flow on the inbound side is to add more buckets. So if you're able to actually add more capacity on the processing side, uh, you're able to kind of spread out that flow, so to speak. So even though your inbound pipe is full, uh, it's at least getting spread among a number of DNS servers and you're able to basically split that, and it may be more than two, maybe uh, you know, three, 10, whatever number makes sense for your capacity. You may have a load balancer in front of that as well. So just uh, having the ability to, uh, to spread that, uh, that flow of traffic over multiple sources and hopefully be able to respond accordingly to those that are legitimate. So how do you do this in practical terms once we get past the basics? Okay, I think we understand the concept. So stemming the flow, I can, you know, basically, if you're running a DNS application only on this particular server, you can drop non-DNS packets, so you can use IP tables, or if you're using appliances such as ours, you can basically configure this right in the, uh, uh, the appliance uh, menu so that you can drop non-DNS packets. Uh, you can also use block lists to block certain IP addresses. 
Um, and this typically works for a case where you've got attacks coming in from a relatively small number of IP addresses. Again, not really the case with the Dyn attack, but it is something to keep in your repertoire should you experience an attack that seems to be coming from a small list or block of IP space that you can throttle back. And also rate limiting. Uh, if you've got a lot of commonality with respect to uh, client IP addresses, kind of a quota system if you have got the ability to do that uh, through, again, IP cables or your appliance uh, manufacturer or what other, other tools you might be using on your DNS server, uh, that could be another option for you. So again, not tremendously valuable for this type of attack, however, in the general case, something to, again, uh, just keep in mind in terms of uh, being able to mitigate a denial of service attack should you be lucky enough to uh, experience that. Uh, on the add more buckets or add more servers side of the equation, well, Anycast addressing provides a nice solution to enable you to add multiple DNS servers and actually have them all share the same IP address. So Anycast allows you to have the same IP address defined on multiple nodes, perhaps in different locations, and because the nodes are participating with the routing protocol in use, whether it's BGP or OSPF, what have you, the, uh, uh, the DNS servers are able to communicate reachability to the routing infrastructure. The routers are able to route uh, the uh, DNS query traffic according to congestion protocols in general. Uh, they've also got manual overrides if you need to uh, implement that, as was attempted in the Dyn case. Uh, so uh, Anycast gives you a lot of flexibility as well, and it doesn't really impact the servers that are querying because they're just querying the same IP address. It's not necessarily going to the same server every time, but uh, given the UDP, primarily UDP nature of DNS, that works rather well in DNS. And in fact, it was proven to be effective in a, um, an earlier uh, 2005 attack on the root servers that enabled the spread of the, the dial of service attack across a number of servers, thereby mitigating the impact on any one server. Now, another thing you can do is to diversify. And uh, what that means is that uh, you can use, of course, have your, you know, if you're using Anycast, deploy servers in different geographies. If you serve worldwide constituents, and who doesn't? It's the World Wide Web, right? So you want to deploy your DNS servers uh, uh, in a diverse fashion geographically, different regions of the world, and also consider service provider diversity. So if you are using a uh, DNS hosting provider, maybe use a different one in addition to as a backup. In this case, one hosting provider was attacked. Others were available. Uh, you may also want to supplement that with an in-house DNS hosting. In other words, uh, stand up your own DNS servers within your DMZs, configure them, and also secure them appropriately. And either have that as your primary and a service provider as a secondary or as a backup, uh, but have the ability to have really multiple points. Again, if the service provider gets attacked, then uh, you're able to still resolve based on your own name servers. Now, if you're attacked, you're probably going to be attacked at both points, but again, if you're spreading out that attack across multiple servers, your service provider, your in-house deployment, then you've got a better chance of helping to mitigate the attack load. Again, we're going to continue to see these denial of service attacks ratcheting up in the bandwidth. The 1.2 terabits per second is just a tremendously large number, so that's Probably going to be attempted, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, one-upmanship, I'm sure, in terms of uh, the various attackers out there. So be on the ready for that and being able to distribute that traffic to be able to continue to process your legitimate queries in a timely manner is going to be of utmost importance for you. So if you've got, uh, I know this is really brief, high level, but if you uh, need more information, we've got a DNS Security Resource Center that we provide on the link here. And uh, also feel free to email me if you have any particular questions, comments, or suggestions. Thank you for viewing this video, and I wish you a good day.